In our next example, we're going to write the Lewis structure for carbonyl sulfide, COS. Now, C for carbon, O for oxygen, S for sulfur. And I put them in such a way that we're not quite sure which one will go in the middle, which one will go on the sides. But right away, we follow our rules. Which one has the lowest electronegativity of those three? And it would have to be carbon. And which of those three has the lowest number of valence electrons? Again, it would be carbon. So carbon is the atom which is most likely going to be the central structure of this molecule. So I'm going to assume that we have carbon in the middle and that we have oxygen and sulfur on the sides. So you could put oxygen on one side and sulfur on the other side. So I'm assuming it's going to look like this. Now obviously we could have put sulfur here and oxygen there. It would not have made any difference. So next I'm going to start with a single bond on each side. The reason for that is I realize that oxygen has six valence electrons, sulfur has six valence electrons, and carbon has four valence electrons, which means that the oxygen and the sulfur could be okay with a single bond. If we add a single bond for oxygen, a single bond for sulfur, that will allow them to share two electrons with carbon and that would give them eight in the octet rule. So let's take a look. So if we make a single bond there, um, so that would mean, hmm, that would kind of cause a problem because let's see, if I put, if I have a single bond, that would leave us with five electrons around oxygen, that would f leave us with five electrons around sulfur, and that would leave us with one and two electrons for carbon. Now notice that carbon shared two of its electrons to make the two bonds, so it has a total of four electrons, and that would leave us leave it only with six electrons as the number of valence electrons for carbon, which is not following the octet rule. Here we can see that we have two, four, six, seven electrons for oxygen, two, four, six, uh, seven electrons for sulfur, so the whole thing kind of falls apart. It's not following the octet rule for oxygen, sulfur, or carbon, so therefore this is not a good option. So maybe we'll try a double bond. So we have carbon, sulfur, and oxygen. Let's try a double bond. If we have a double bond here, right away, carbon now follows the octet rule. It now has four bonds accounting for a part-time uh, possession of eight electrons. Now with a double bond, that means there's only four electrons left for oxygen because two of its six electrons are used for the two bonds right here. And same for sulfur with the double bond here. Sulfur now only has four electrons remaining like so. And now when we take a look, we realize that notice two, four, six, eight electrons part-time for oxygen, eight electrons part-time for carbon, and eight, eight electrons part-time for sulfur. So the octet rule is satisfied with this kind of lowest structure. Next, we want to make sure that the total number of valence electrons equal the total number of valence electrons I started with. Notice that 6 plus 6 plus 4, that is 16 valence electrons were available in all of the bonds and all of the free electrons in the valence orbits. All right, let's see if we still have 16 electrons. 2 plus 2 is 4 electrons for oxygen and 4 electrons for sulfur. And then we have 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons in the, in the four bonds, so plus eight, and eight plus eight is 16, and 16 matches 16, so the octet rule is, is followed, and the number of valence electrons used is followed. So it looks like we have the correct Lewis structure here. We have a carbon in the middle, oxygen and sulfur on either side. It makes a double bond with both, leaving four additional electrons for oxygen and sulfur. There's the Lewis structure for carbonyl sulfide, and that's how you do that.